Last time on Dragon Ball Z, after a heated match, the absolute war between Young Trunks and Goten finally reached its finale. After Trunks, crossing his fingers and breaking his pinky promise turned Super Saiyan and brought their bout to an explosive finish. After complaints were aired and excuses were ventilated, it was Hercule Satan that was left grasping for air at the realization that his commitment to spar the junior division champ may have just been a touch more than he bargained for. With brainiac levels of intensity, Satan navigated his brain to find any possible way out of the matchup with a bratty brawler. But on this day, the luck of the devil finally ran out and Satan was left to pay the troll's toll. Did you bring the toll? Thinking that he outwitted the puny powerhouse with talks of a gentleman's jab, Hercule expected to walk away from the encounter compound fracture free, but unfortunately for him, a Saiyan's definition of nice and gentle carries a few subtle differences from that of an earthling, and Trunks' 0.9% jab sent Satan and his afro flying across the arena grounds and into a brick wall, leaving him a permanent reminder that there are just some checks out there not worth cashing. Now, after Hercule's humbling harassment, we return to the perspective of the Z homies who are about to prepare themselves for the forthcoming fisticuff. As the Z homies prepare to make their way to the competitor's side without a second thought, they get stopped at the front of the club by a bouncer who needs to see their credentials. The best part for me is how Krill is the one that gets the most low-key offended, recommending that Kaniku man here adjust his glasses real quick and take a look at that list real fast for the one time, because despite the fact that they may be rolling deep, every single one of their names ring bells like Marlo Stanfield around here. My name is my name! And they are more than qualified for the backstage pass, no problem. After each of the homies' names get read off, we get a quick stop at Big Green, who for tournament purposes is going by a street name, Ma Junior. Kakarot looks back at him like, damn, Ma Junior? That's a grade A throwback right there. Doing it for the nostalgia. Green, quickly reminded of the severity of his homie CTE, calmly explains that if he had to wager, he's pretty sure the name Piccolo is on a no-fly list still in this tournament, so going by his alias from the good old days was probably the move. While Goku and company were confirming with tournament staff that they indeed had that dog in them, Trunks was scheming on how to get the dog out of a nearby mark and was getting Goten up to speed on his plans. Trunks, spying prime bozo material, hurries Goten over to have him take a look. Ayo, hey, Tintin, look at the old Ku Klux Clapper over there in that questionable hood. What do you say we run this goofball's pockets and enter the tournament so we can throw hands with the adults? Whoa, Trunks, are you serious? Bro, you are bugging right now. You know what my mom would do to me if she find out? It'll be worse than what happened to Gohan after my mom found his text messages to Videl. First of all, gross. Second of all, I guess I never realized how bitch made you were, Goten. My dad did always talk about how soft you and your brother were, though. I'd always hoped he was wrong, but okay, fine, Trunks, you win. But when our parents find out, I swear this is all on you. And with Goten's massive reluctance, the scheme began. Trunks rolled up on the burning cross bandit, lied through his teeth that there was a baddie nearby who had a thing for confederacy sympathizers and superhero costumes, and the moment Buddy was caught lacking, Trunks got him with the Captain Spock, finessed this man for his whole fit, and proceeded to Voltron up with Goten under the dress and make their way to the tournament opening matches on some pure Disney Channel sitcom timing. The Saiyan smash down soon pause in the cafeteria is a little one, but definitely worth a mention also if only for the comedy it brings. The Z crew is all just sitting around the table in horror watching Goku and Vegeta just beat this buffet's ass like it just backhanded Bulma. Krill makes an absolutely valid observation wondering why the hell Goku still has his shonen protagonist anime man appetite when he don't even got a body for real. And Vegeta is just next to him head down getting busy and absolutely hosed the waiting staff demanding somebody bring him some egg rolls immediately before the whole cafe gets wet up. Eat more spaghetti please! And bring some more egg rolls while you're at it! Gohan and his do-rag walk in during chow time. It's chow time! And y'all already know his greedy ass took him and his wave cap straight to the bench and started demanding more entrees after being in the vicinity for maybe 45 seconds tops. Bro, what was he cooking with the do-rag? I know I talk about it a lot, but I could not get over it. Was he really out here trying to get on that Harry Osborne timing and become the first saying with waves? But honestly, I need to cool it because I'm probably looking at the wrong person sideways. Because even though Gohan is the one who knowingly chose to rock this abhorrent fit, it was Bulma Briefs of all people who concocted it for him. And that makes this whole thing even more egregious because she's the absolute queen of fits, arguably one of the most dripped out ladies in all anime period. The only thing I can think of is that Miss Briefs is down with the swirl. On them late nights when the prince ain't acting right, let's just say teaching Bulma the making ain't the only lesson Popo gave her. And after the Saiyan Smash session in the cafeteria, the homies make their way ever closer to game time when they're suddenly compelled to stop in their tracks. Standing in front of them, two figures in an admittedly immaculate fit are standing stuff right next to them. Little man with a mohawk exuding inordinate amounts of twink energy sizes them up, before eventually asking them is the man in the orange gi with the pregnancy gut the one they 
they call Goku. After Wreck was in Who the Hell Are Ya, Little Boy Blue here tells Goku that he's been a fan for some time, and while he has no illusions of being able to butter his bread, he would love a chance to challenge him in the tournament and ask the confused warrior if he would be kind enough to shake his hand. Being the mannerable hill jack that he is, Goku spits on his hand and presents the young man with a hearty putter there, and is met with not only the most oddly limp-wristed handshake he's ever had the displeasure of, but his gaze is met with the absolutely most stomach-churning, shit-eating grin that's ever graced the planet Earth. Like, every time I see this part, I just go, ew, man, stop. Like, what was Supreme Kai cooking right here? Goku's better than me. Dude starts smiling like that, and I'm having intrusive thoughts that he just pissed on his hands or worse, and now we gotta square up on principle. Eventually, the diabolical handshake ends, though, and Timon and Pumbaa carry on their way, leaving the Z homies to ponder what they just walked into. After giving his hand a quick smell check, Goku smiles and states to the crew that before he thought this tournament was going to be free eats, but it looks like some real ones showed up after all. The rest of the Z homies are skeptical, unsure why Goku would be putting any stock at all on the 4 foot 6 blue man with questionable substances on his palms, but Big Green saw through the facade as well as the crusty fingers and knew Goku was right to be cautious. Whoever those two were, they definitely were not from this planet and their presence here had them on edge. What goal could two creatures like that possibly have coming to Earth? And for Kami's sake, was Goku ever going to put some hand sanitizer on because for the life of him that handshake was all he could think about? But the day carried on and it was finally time for the big boy tournament to commence and for the Z Warriors to see just which Earthlings they would be finessing the bag from. And the lineup was exactly as you'd expect. Just grade A jobber material Cobra Kai rejects every single direction you look. First group of D-bags we get a look at are the two proud boy lieutenants, clearly on gear, standing down and standing by with a strange M on their head, which for now we're going to assume has to do with the requirements for the McDonald's sponsorship terms of service. Next up is Goten and Trunks in their Captain Ku Klux uniform, and they couldn't look any more conspicuous if they tried. Then you got my favorite, that's right y'all, none other than Killer. Like where do you even start with this man? I mean off rip, this dude is just a walk and talk in violation from square one. Like did they really have to the name buddy killer and just the more you look at them the worse it gets the big red lips are absolutely insane but here's what makes bro even worse in the original japanese dub as much as toriyama does not know how to draw a boozy fade to save his life and as awful as he is to look at they at least let buddy speak straight regular old japanese like the rest of the cast but over here in the states funimation decided they need to cook up something just a little different with buddy so we get our version of killer who speaks like mushmouth from fat albert's junkie yard gang with just a little bit of that ebonics twang on the end just for some razzle dazzle but he literally speaks like if boom Hauer from king of the hill had a baby with a white dude from family guy that does all the black dude voices man i tell you that man i've been taught i work up like a duck hammer <laughs> Man, you talking for that. Absolutely tragic any way you slice it. Someone please add another quarter to the Toriyama reparations jar. Following this monstrosity, we got Red Shrek, whose face is fixed like somebody permanently pissing his cornflakes, and cap it off the two final faces. One being Jewel, a be in bruiser who would likely be an anime protagonist in any series but Dragon Ball, and a tragically named Punta, aka the homie Pink Tar for us Westerners, who's the resident big body jobber, only present to show the power gap between the Z homies and the rest of the unfortunate participants. And with the participants introduced, we got our brackets Big Krill vs. Pinche Pendejo. Match 2 Big green aka my junior aka the guy your girl told you not to worry about versus the smug leprechaun <laughs> match three is spopovich versus his punching bag match four is red shrek versus beautiful joe match five is my wife versus ron jeremy match six is dumb versus dumber match seven is the dude playing a dude disguised as another dude versus jim crow era setbacks and eight is the grand wizard versus justin bieber <laughs> And as the competitors, Uncle Krill and Pinche Punto Pendejo prepare to enter the ring, the unfortunately named Marin watches her father prepare to step up to the arena and begins getting majorly frightened. Afraid to witness her dad getting stomped outside of the beatings he regularly catches from Mama 18 for blowing his measly checks on Backwoods with Roshi. As the young Marin airs her fears, who else but Lord Yamcha should chime in with some words of encouragement, telling her that she has absolutely nothing to worry about and that her pops is fine, but he is literally the strongest man in the world. Well, strongest human anyway. I hate 
And right here with this one statement from the C-listed bench warmer at this point, Toriyama was single-handedly set back the Dragon Ball power scaling community centuries and perpetuate an argument that still persists to this day. Far be it for me to act like I'm above it though. Leave your pick in the comments for who you think the strongest human is. Back in the day, I definitely would have argued you up and down that it was Krill, but the more time goes on and I really think about it, it's absolutely insane for Tien not to get his accolades for the level of clutch he has stepping up to some of the nasty hombres in the series. And after saying something so controversial yet so brave, our perspective returns to the match at hand, and I gotta say I'm a big fan of the energy Krillin is giving over here. But he steps up to the plate with the exact attitude a grizzle war vet of his type should. Y'all already know Big Punta was in the ring working to cut the craziest promo ever. Clowning Krill for being a short king, telling him how he was gonna collect not only the bag but his wife after the whole thing was said and done. Then you got old Billy Blanks watching from outside the club talking about, damn shame little man, probably ain't never gonna regain full use of his body after this one, not me. And as the action gets ready to unfold, when the announcer calls for things to start up, Big Punta opens up on his gymnastics tip. Surprising everybody with his big man athleticism like he's Bob from Tekken, letting Krill know that even though he may be a big body, he's got some speed to him, so he might as well hand over his girl's digits now while he still has the use of both his hands. Then Big Punta makes DBZ handbook mistake number one, getting overly cocky and allowing Krill to get a non-contested hit to start things off. Krill with all the enthusiasm of Charlie Brown get ready to kick a field goal is like damn free eats I guess puts his whole hand up inside this grown man's belly button slaps the entire taste out of his mouth and kicks buddy so hard he dents the stadium concrete losing with both a ring out and a KO under his belt how you lose 2-0 in a best of one that's insane man shade to the Sonic Fox versus Perfect Legend 13-0 sweep I fear Wasting no time, next up we got my homie and one of the realest to ever do it, Big Green versus the Mysterious Shin. Now this fight is one the Z homies were coming with some expectations with, after Goku made the comments about this tournament having some real ones with hands after all. While my man Majuga may not have Super Saiyan 2 level dynamite in his fist, that dude is an absolute force to be reckoned with and the Z warriors, including Vegeta, acknowledge this. So seeing how little boy Blue stacks up against one of Earth's mightiest hitters will be a good gauge of just exactly what they're dealing with. But the whole thing starts off weird off rip. Even when Piccolo knows he doesn't have the hands to fight what's to come, Buddy rarely if ever has shown nervousness or a reluctance to fight against a worthy opponent. But before even stepping into the ring, this man Shane had Kamikolo sweating like DJ Academics in the Migos interview. Just what type of time was this man on? And you best believe Shane could smell the bitch pheromones polluting the air too. Buddy was just taking in a huge whiff of the bus ass. And after getting his fill, the menace just stares Piccolo in his eyes and is like, all right, little buddy, you're right to be nervous, but you'll be finding out what's coming very soon. For now, just enjoy this work you're about to catch and take a load off, champ. And it was here where something inside Piccolo snapped and Buddy was like, nah, y'all got this one. Ref, ref. Yup, call the fight, I forfeit. Gohan peeped his stepdad Piccolo getting bitched out like Aiden Ross and almost lost his lunch. Him and his do-rag both were in absolute shock. Even the announcer was like, hold up, Big Green, am I hearing you right? You said you ain't gonna throw him? Man's like Piccolo just said absolutely correct and walked off like LeBron James putting on his shades and grabbing his man purse in that one meme. And while it's easy to clown Piccolo, y'all do not know how much respect I got for a man or an Namekian who was willing to put his ego aside to make the move he feels is right. But he was straight like, look, y'all can call me whatever y'all want to, but at the end of the day, something's making my tummy hurt. I'm not about to fight that man. And as Piccolo leaves the ring, Goku gets serious for a second and asks Green what's going on. Because Piccolo's a lot of things, but Soft ain't one of them. And asks the homie, is this Shin dude really as powerful as he thinks? To which Piccolo responds with an emphatic yes with zero hesitation, telling Goku that the difference between them is too great. Now this wording is actually super interesting because when it's translated like this, that statement can mean a couple different things. On the one hand, you can take it at face value as Piccolo confirming with Goku that yes, Shin is actually just that raw, and me and my cape and turban want absolutely no smoke from that Asul colored demon with a mohawk. But the second way is pretty interesting and major shout outs to the homie Laughing Stock Media who pointed this out and gave me some food for thought as well. The second way you can interpret this is as Piccolo having respect for a station in the world and refusing to square up with a divine being he perceives as above him in the role he now occupies as the guardian of Earth. Piccolo's reluctance to fight Shane is more complicated than fear about Buddy's power level. And a phenomenon that I can only imagine came as a result of his merger with Kami, Piccolo has now gained a much greater insight and respect for the role of balance in the universe, and him putting the paws to Shane would be tantamount to a human squaring up with the deity of whatever religion they worship in one of those YouTube boxing matches. It's just beyond the realm of the absurd and something that you just don't do, even if you do got that kind of dog in you. From the kingdom of heaven, please welcome... God!
but as Piccolo put a premature end to his match, it was now time for the third round and one of the competitors wouldn't be so lucky. The next fight in the tournament is Spopovich versus Videl, and it's definitely a fight to remember for all the wrong reasons. And here, as the Ghani and Paul Bearers slowly make their way to Videl's side of the ring, is where we're gonna call it. To keep it a whole bean, I don't gotta tell any of y'all how bad the beatdown that's about to come actually is. Tune in next time as we go over this travesty in 4K and proceed to side-eye Gohan for the remainder of the series for letting his girl get molly-whopped in this fashion. Be easy, y'all, and I'll catch you again in the next video.